Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So I'm a bit late with the monthly stats this month, sorry about that, I've been a bit busy. Um, but uh, if you want a quick review of the system that we've got, please check the description, I've got it all summarised there. So let's not waste any more time and get on with it. So as always, let's start with the report generated from the Give Energy Report tab. And uh, you can see that we generated 297 kilowatt hours of solar generation, so uh, quite well down on, uh, on the previous month and 600 kilowatt hours of daily consumption. So that's up a little bit and I'll show you why in a second. And you can see the battery um, uh, section here seems to have changed uh, about halfway through the month. And the reason for that is we switched from Octopus Go to, uh, sorry, we switched from Octopus Flux to Octopus Go on the 18th of October. So I changed the way we, um, we were running the battery, um, charging up more overnight and uh, relying less on solar for topping up the battery. And the reason uh, it took until the 18th of, of October to um, switch tariffs was we had a bit of a nightmare switching because of um, Flux has this uh, export tariff and the Octopus Flux export. And in order to switch to Go, you have to come off the Flux export tariff onto the standard export guarantee. Then they can switch you over to Go and then they switch you from the export tariff, the, uh, the smart export guarantee, onto the, uh, the outgoing light, which is what you're allowed to have uh, in combination with the Go tariff. So yeah, that all took uh, much longer than anticipated, so slightly annoying. And it's meant that I've had to make much more complicated spreadsheets to cope with two tariffs per month, but uh, that's a whole other video. Um, but yeah, you can see um, that uh, it did re result in us changing our behavior slightly for the, uh, the last part of the month, and that's fine. We're now operating on uh, the Octopus Go strategy. And if I scroll up uh, to the top here, you can see uh, normally I don't bother with this self-consumption, but you can see now the self-consumption is um, becoming uh, significantly higher than it was during the summer because during the summer we were obviously trying to export a decent amount because the Octopus Flux export rate was so good. Now that we're on Octopus Go, uh, the um, obviously the export rate is not nearly as good and we'd rather consume all of our solar generation. And since there's not as much solar generation, that's much easier to do. And the, uh, the nice little energy flow chart here, you can see um, we're actually pulling a bit more from the grid and obviously the, uh, the solar is much less than in previous months. But uh, you'll see um, how it compares to previous months in the next set of charts. Okay, so one of the other reasons I've been a bit late with this particular video this month is that I've been sprucing up the charts a little bit. Uh, so I've made this monthly consumption chart where I show the breakdown of uh, the major components of, of our consumption. Um, so I've, uh, I've added it for since uh, May all the way through to October. Um, I didn't have reliable um, numbers for April, so I've skipped that one. Um, so I'm just starting in May. And you can see uh, what we got here is um, the different colors represent the different components of our consumption. So the blue bit, I've called that remainder because it's basically whatever's left over after these other four categories have been taken out. But that's essentially just a house base load. That's the normal day-to-day -day operation of the house, all the stuff, you know, watching telly, having the lights on, cooking, all that um, normal, regular stuff. And that's the stuff that um, we would normally use if we weren't, if you know, if we didn't have the solar, if we didn't have the batteries, if we were just operating um, a normal house, uh, that's the stuff that would that would still be there. And that's what I use to calculate our um, uh, the what our bill would have been on the standard uh, flexible electric tariff from, from Octopus um, and what I use then to calculate the savings that we make based on that. Um, but these other categories you can see, we've got the EV here. Uh, we used 113 kilowatt hours last month in October and we used um, 82.5 uh, kilowatt hours for the air to air. So that's the heating basically. So we started using the air to air system for heating in October um, and uh, that used 82.5 kilowatt hours and the hot water um, is what we're currently using just a, uh, an immersion heater um, heated overnight during the, uh, the off-peak period and that was 127 um, kilowatt hours and this new category now is the towel rails um, at 13 kilowatt hours. Now that is um, at the moment basically just the one in our ensuite for about an hour a day something like that and um, we used it a tiny bit in September and just I think this one was literally me testing it out uh, during uh, during August so um, obviously we didn't have it have any of those um, towel rails electrified prior to that so that's all zero essentially up until September um, but now yeah we're just running the, the towel rail uh, in our ensuite for an hour overnight again during the, the off-peak period just to dry off the towels ready for the morning um, and you can see that generally speaking the uh, the daily base load is pretty stable um you know from one month to the next i think in uh, in June we went away for a week so that was a bit lower than normal and in September we went away for a few days so again that was a bit lower than normal um, but otherwise that's reasonably stable the um the, sl the slightly annoying thing about the air to air system is that um 
I, I mentioned this um, in a previous video, but uh, this this sort of 15-ish uh, kilowatt hours um, per month is actually just the standby rate for the for the, um, the the two heat pumps outside. Actually, I think most of it comes uh, from the uh, the in indoor units being um, on standby. You know, with the the Wi-Fi. Um, uh, signal going and all that stuff. Um, I wondered whether or not I could turn this off over these off over the summer when we're not using them. Um, I, we did use a little bit for cooling purposes in um, in June and a little bit in September, but uh, most of the time they just sat there not doing anything, and that's drawing sort of twenty watts more or less constantly, um, just in uh, just a standby. So I, I was wondering whether or not I could turn those off um, during the summer when we're not using it. I've had conflicting. Uh, answers from different people some people saying it's fine some people saying you should leave them on um, I do really need to get to the bottom of this I should tell you what I should do I should just contact Toshiba because that would probably be the right uh, give, give me the, the the final answer but there you go uh, I'll do that at some point um, I'm just very lazy and I don't get around to it so uh, if somebody can give me an answer uh, on the YouTube comments that would be very welcome um, you know once and for all but uh, yeah that's the monthly consumption let's move over to the generation so here's the generation chart showing what we generated over the last few months and uh, you can see in October uh, it was actually a decent month we generated slightly more than the expect expectation based on the um, the PVGIS uh, website that um, I used to generate this uh, this blue shaded area here which is what we um, would expect to generate and you can see the um, the plus one standard deviation line is just above where we generated in October. So we were on the top end of um, what we would consider a sort of normal-ish range of generation. Um, and you can see um, in September it was slightly lower, so we made up for that, which was nice. Um, but otherwise, yeah, everything's uh, ticking along nicely, but uh, heading very rapidly downhill into uh, the depths of winter. So not expecting very much in November or December or January or February. So um, yeah, let's see how that goes. And a new chart for this month. Um, obviously, we've uh, started to use our heating system um, a little bit more for actual heating. And what I've done is I've generated the same sort of chart as for the the expected generation with the um, you know the plus and minus one standard deviation line. Um, I've recentered it um, for this purpose around January to give you know the nice the nice bump rather than having it cut off uh, midway through the winter. Um, and the the way I've generated this is um, I did a lot of modelling last year um, basically taking our uh, heating consumption load comparing it against the um, the temperature on each day and how much sun was coming through the windows to uh, you know to, to help with heating the house through solar gain and I built a little sort of regression model which is, this is the sort of thing I do in my day job so um, you know it, it's not too hard uh, and basically worked out what the um, our, our heating load would have been for every day over the last 13 years because I was able to get 13 years of historical data and then what I've done is I've um, I've added all that up into um, individual months and for each of those uh, 13 years I've calculated the spread of um, our expected heating demand uh, over those 13 years for each month and that's where this blue shaded area comes from so um, the, the 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 solid shaded area is the average what we would have used you know uh, each month and then you've got the plus and minus one again one standard deviation um, above and below that so if we used significantly less than these this lower um, air, uh, line here then that would be an unusually low amount of heating for that particular month and if we were above this upper line that would indicate a slightly unusually higher amount of heating for that month presumably because you know the weather was super cold or whatever it happened to be maybe we just happened to run the heating a lot a lot more than uh, than usual so for the first month that we've got some actual data you can see in October we used um, actually quite a bit less than I was expecting we're, we're towards the lower end of, um, of the sort of normal range uh, I, I, I don't know whether that was because the um, the weather was particularly mild Maybe my model is slightly wrong. Actually, what I do need to do is uh, is dig out the um, the actual temperature data for October just to compare to what we would normally expect um, for this time of year. Um, um, but yeah, I'm reasonably pleased with that. And uh, I'll continue to add to this over the coming uh, few months and we'll see how we how we go um, over the uh, the course of the winter. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a new chart for this month. So I hope you enjoy that one. And let's move on to the uh, savings for the month. So I'm doing this in a little bit of a different way compared to previous months. I'm not bothering with all the sort of uh, the text boxes and stuff. I've decided that a chart is much easier to see. And this allows me to show you the, um, the savings that I've calculated each uh, month over the last few months. 
Uh, and also what I've done here is I've added the, the actual um, calculated bill on as well. So uh, the bill that we actually pay Octopus for each month is in red. And you can see over the summer, we were actually uh, having negative bills. Octopus were paying us. Um, and we've just now got to the point where we've started to pay Octopus instead. Um, so our bill uh, for o October um, came to 53 pounds and nine pence. And it gave us a total savings of £132.83. So that's um, uh, all of the savings from uh, being on the smart tariffs that we're on, so Flux or Go, um, because it was split um, roughly half and half over October, um, compared to what we would have been, uh, what we would have paid um, on the standard flexible uh, tariff, assuming we didn't have the EV and assuming we didn't have the electric heating. So um, uh, the uh, what I'm assuming here is that uh, we would have used gas for our hot water and we would have used gas for our heating. And I've made a reasonably um, generous uh, conversion between our heating load and what we would have used for gas. So I've erred on the side of caution and I've said, uh, whatever heating load we have, I'm assuming we would have used three times as many kilowatt hours uh, for with, uh, with gas um, compared to the amount of uh, electricity we used. Uh, for our air-to-air -air heat, heat pump system. In reality, I suspect we're actually achieving slightly better efficiency than that. Um, so uh, really the savings are probably, th this is a, a lower estimate of the savings. Um, but yeah, just, just in case, um, I don't want to overinflate the savings. So I've been, I've been very generous to our gas boiler efficiency and I've um, um, gone quite low with our assumed coefficient of performance for the heat, heat pump system. So in reality, this is a, this is a bit of a lower, a lower bound. And um, so um, uh, yeah, bear that in mind. These, none of these values are uh, exact. All of these, all of these blue um, savings values are, are an estimate on my part. So um, uh, yeah, bear that in mind. Uh, but I think they're not going to be a million miles out. Um, so we're still doing pretty well in terms of uh, the monthly savings. My prediction last month was that as we started to use more heating, this would start to tick up. Let's. Uh, I think we might be at the bottom here. I think we. I think it's going to tick up again in in November. But uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Hopefully, meet me back here next month and see if I see if I'm right. So that's it for October 2023. Hope you found that interesting. I'll catch you in the next one.